for so many years, 60 years almost. Now, after this revolution, 2011, between 2011 and the coup that happened in July 2013, there were five general votes in Egypt. Five. They voted on the parliament, they voted on the constitution, they voted on the presidency. Five. In every one of them, the Islamic movement won. So it's a clear choice of the people. Now, remember, this is, this is a movement that was considered satanic for 60 years. Huh? They still could not taint it. So, since we are, we know that the Muslim movement is the choice of the people. Islam is the choice of the people. So we fear no one. And by the way, the Quran tells us that. The Quran says, Hujjatullahi Baliga. The logic of Allah or Islam reaches the highest, Baliga. It is the highest level of logic and proof. We believe in freedom of speech, freedom of ideas. Let anyone speak their mind. It's not only for Muslims that is unjust. See, some countries, they allow Muslims to preach, but they don't allow others to preach. That is unjust. That is double standard. We believe, let everyone be free. By the way, we believe that you do not need a license to start a party. Because to get a license, you have to get it from a government. And usually governments are ruled by a party. So they, you're making them your rivals, and at the same time, your judges. You cannot do that. So no licensing for any party. No licensing for any magazine or newspaper. No licensing for any satellite. Free. See, this interaction of ideas, that will, what will build civilizations. And by the way, this was, this was, was practiced in the beginning of Islam. To the highest level, you just... People don't imagine this. This is the highest level. Again, don't take Islam from tradition or from the practices of some people today or some countries. I'll give you one example. The fourth Khalifa, fourth ruler of Islam after the Prophet وسلم, is Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu wa karrama wajah. Ali the cousin of the Prophet one of the greatest scholars. He was the judge at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was the military leader, one of the major military leaders. He is, by the way, the second military leader in Islam after Khalid ibn Walid. If you count who are the military leaders, number one Khalid, number two Ali. So we're talking about a man who is a scholar, a great judge, a political leader. And he was one of the best worshippers and the cousin of the Prophet So he was chosen to be the fourth leader. A long story, but during his time, a group of Muslims split from his army and they are called Al-Khawarij. Al-Khawarij means those who left, Kharaju. They left. So they left the army of Ali and proclaimed that Ali is not a Muslim. He is an infidel. An 
they were not only against him, huh? they said he is kafir, he is an infidel. And they formed an army. But they did not attack anyone yet. So the companions who were around Sayyidina Ali said to him, these people are very dangerous because they are militant and fanatic, which is the formula for terrorism. If you have weapons and you're fanatic, you're ready to be a terrorist. So they said to him, attack them before they kill anyone. Now Ali, one of the greatest scholars of Muslims, huh? he knows knowledge. He, he was raised in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu so he knows it firsthand. He said, I am not allowed to. Qawmun ra'aw ra'yan fada'uhum wa ma ra'aw. These people believe in ideas. Let them have their own ideas. So these Khawarij did not stop at this. They went even further. So Ali moved from Medina, which was the capital of Islam, and he made Kufa in Iraq his capital. And he lived in a house that was not far from the main masjid. And he was the leader, the imam of the prayers in the main masjid. So every day, five times, he would go from his house to the masjid. Al-Khawarij did something very, very strange. That they arranged themselves when it is the time for prayers to make two lines from the house of Ali to the door of the masjid. So Ali has to pass between them. Every day. Five times a day. And they would shout at him while he goes from his house to the masjid. You infidel! Ya adu Allah! Enemy of Allah! And they're talking to Ali. And he was the supreme leader of Muslims. Huh? He did not touch them. Now, what is more than that as a freedom of speech? Huh? <laughs> now, give me a country where people will attack the supreme leader and will be left alone. <laughs> people will find a way to either kill them <laughs> or imprison them or fabricate a case against them. And you have seen such things, huh? <laughs> so you, this is rare, huh? Ali did not attack al-Khawarij until they killed an innocent man and killed his wife. Then, and only then, he said, now I am allowed to attack them. Because now they move from freedom of speech into crime, into action. So as long as they stay in the freedom of speech area, whatever they say, it is up to them. Now just imagine a society that has this level of freedom. But at the same time, Islam teaches us that freedom of speech does not mean freedom of insults. So if you insult anyone, then you go to court. And it, it is not the freedom of bad ethics. So if you do pornography, then you will be stopped. Because it is not freedom of speech anymore. It is hurting ethics and destroying the young generation. It has nothing to do with freedom of speech. So this is, this is the state that we imagine. Huh? 
a state that is full of justice, where everyone has the right for justice. In the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, عنه, he saw a Jewish person carrying the weapon of Ali. His weapon, he knows his weapon. And he lost it in the battle of Safin. So he said to the Jewish person, this is my weapon. He said, no, this is not yours. He said, this is my weapon, I know it. And he refused, he said, no. So this weapon was so dear to Ali because it was given to him by the Prophet So just imagine, he would not leave such a thing. Huh? So he took the Jewish person to court. He said, this is my weapon. The judge said, do you have any proof that it is your weapon? He said, I can bring a witness. So bring your witness. So he brought his son, Al-Hasan ibn Ali, to witness. The judge said, I don't accept this witness. A son cannot be a witness for his father. Now this is Hassan ibn Ali, one of the greatest scholars of Islam. He was the fifth ruler of Islam later on. Huh? After Ali, they chose Hassan. And then Muawiyah came. So he disclaimed him. He disclaimed the words of Ali and disclaimed the witnesses with the witness of Al Hassan, two great scholars of Islam. And asked him, Do you have any other one to prove that it is yours? He said, I cannot think of anyone who can witness that. So the judge said to the Jewish person, The weapon is yours. The Jew left and then came back. He said, it is his weapon. I have never seen a justice or heard of a justice in my life like this. That's what, it, this, is, this is our dream. Justice for all. No favors to any family or any governor or any ruler or any scholar. Equality for all. Muslims and non-Muslims. Freedom of speech for all. Civil society for all. If the people, even if Muslims, don't choose us, we don't force them into Islam. We go and make da'wah. We go and teach them Islam. And show them our programs and agendas and what we're going to do. Until they are convinced to choose us. So, it's a political just civil system that we are after. And we are sure, we have no doubt that our people will choose Islam. But even if they don't, this is our choice. So we are not after a theological society or a political system. In our system that we dream of, women will have equality. Full equality of wages, of chances, of education. There are countries, in the, there are some Muslim countries that, for example, today in, in some countries, there is no engineering college for ladies. They cannot enter engineering college. Come on, what is this? I mean, this has nothing, this has nothing to do with Islam. So whatever you hear of oppression, uh, discrimination against women, has nothing to do with Islam. And this is very clear from our history and from the original Islam. There's a huge, great book. It's called Tahrir al-Mar'a fi Asr al-Risala. I don't know whether it's translated or not, but it should be. I have never read a book about the status of women in Islam better than this book. None. I, alhamdulillah, I've read hundreds. 
there's, this is the best book about the status of women in Islam. Done by Sheikh Abdul Halim Abu Shukka, who was the colleague of Sheikh Al Qaradawi. In this book, Abdul Halim Abu Shukka did something very strange. He brought only the proofs, only 